once again, it's good to represent Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior of the world and of our lives. And some of us are caught in situations that we don't realize where they came from. We don't realize where, why we're in them. Uh, but it's called the curses of generations. And sometimes they become habits, and we're caught in habits that we don't realize what we're involved in. And these things need to be broken and to be set free from them because they will bring damnation and heresy into our lives. In the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 5, the Bible lets us know, Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For the Lord thy God am a jealous God, visiting the iniquities of the fathers upon the children unto the third and the fourth generation of them that hate me. Now, sad to say, there's a lot of people in the world today that hate God. There's a lot of people that are fools because the Bible says they're a fool. And don't turn me off right now because God's trying to deal with you because you're turned in to listen. Amen. And I think it will give you some understanding because everybody in life, including myself, including you, we must stand for something or fall for anything. Some of you have fallen in life of the circumstances and the habits of your life, and you don't know why, and you look back to family structure or bloodline, they are things that's been in the family for quite a long time. Amen. And right, relating back to the statement about fools before we go any further, in Proverbs 14 and 9, it says, fools make mockery of sin. Some of you are out there sinning, and you're making mockery of God's word because you don't realize what you're in and why you're in it. You don't have the full understanding, but the Word of God can give you that understanding. In Romans 1.22, it says, Professing themselves to be, become what wise, they became fools. Amen. And the Bible says in Psalms 14 and 1, The fool says in his heart, there is no God. Some of you out there don't believe there is a God. Some of you got titles, you call yourself an atheist. Some of you say, well, you believe there's all kind of gods. But I want to relate to you. God wants to set you free from the curse of your habits. Amen. In verse uh, 2 Thessalonians, amen, it lets us know this here in verse 11 and 12. And for this cause, for not for hating God that we read there in Exodus, for those that hate him and those that don't believe that he is. Amen. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie that they might be damned who believe not the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. You say, well, preacher, you preach a lot about righteousness. Yes, because righteousness is in the will of God. Unrighteousness is out of the will of God. Amen. And also to let you know, the Bible says, amen, that all will stand before the judgment seat of Christ in Romans 14 and 10. Every one of us, me, you, those that are listening in, those that are going to change their hearts, those that are going to deny him, those that are going to hate him, those that reject him, those that don't believe that he is, you're all going to stand before him, amen, and be judged by him. In 2 Corinthians, amen, verse 5 and 10, the Bible lets us know this. Also, I'll get there very shortly because I want to make sure you're getting it very clear. Amen. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, amen. It lets us know in verse 10. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to the that he has done, whether it be good or bad. See, some of you say, well, I'm not doing anything bad but you're going to be judged for what you're doing good. Well, you say, well, I'm not doing anything good. You're going to be judged for anything you've done bad. And some of us have it mixed together. We're doing good and bad. Amen. But you know what? We will all be judged, every one of you, by yourself. We won't be able to have a blame game. But see, if you do not get saved by the blood of Jesus Christ, if you do not have the knowledge of Jesus Christ and let the truth set you free, amen, that we read there in 2 Thessalonians, amen, that you might believe a lie and be damned because you don't know the truth. The Bible says in the book of John, knowing the truth will set you free. Set you free from what? The curse of the iniquities of your father for three or four generations on down, amen. And the iniquities is the wickedness that we live in. 
uh, the, the wrongs that we do wrong, amen, and for three or four generations, they are passed down through the bloodline. Some of you are going through divorces, and if you look back through your family history, there's been one divorce after another, and this side of the family, that side of the family. Some of you have children that's been abused or you've been abused yourself. And if you look back through the family history, if it was possible, you would find out for three or four generations on down, it was in the natural bloodline. Some of you have an alcoholic problem, and you're going to find out they've been drinking in the past because somebody handed somebody a drink. Somebody says one won't hurt you. And guess what? It just led one to another. Some of you even made moonshine all by yourself and a home remedy, you call it. Amen. But you got caught up in that habit, and that habit needs to be broken. There is a higher power. Man calls the higher power an AA. While we're relating on that subject a little bit, they talk about the high power. But my Bible lets me know God is the high power. The one that you want to call you don't believe in, the one that you want to deny, the one that you want to reject. Amen. Or you want to be a fool. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there ain't no God. Don't be foolish and believe a lie and be damned. Some of you are out there in relationships, amen, women with women, men with men, or men with somebody else's wife, or women with somebody else's husband, or just involved in a relationship if not in marriage, and it's a habit that's going on. There's an old saying, well, if the Go try the shoe on before and make sure it fits before you make a connection with it. Well, it all sounds good, but it don't line up with the word of God. Now, this is not a message to judge you. This message is to encourage you and strengthen you and let you know you can come out from under the curse of the iniquity of your father for three or four generations on down. In Deuteronomy, the Bible gives an illustration that God taught to his people, amen, about the curse, amen about things that will lead you into the curse. And see, but God don't want you and I to be cursed. God wants us to be set free. In Deuteronomy chapter 28, God relists uh, quite a few of those. Amen. And, and then according to his word, you and I do not have to stay under that curse because there's conditions. I'm just going to read a few of them, not all of them. Amen. Because time won't permit. But in Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says, Amen. Here's how you can be. You can be blessed or you can be cursed. I choose to be blessed. You have the right to choose today whether you want to be blessed or stay bound in the habit that you're living in and condition that you're living in. Amen. Taking the substance of something, trying to band-aid a fix, and guess what? When the substance wears off, the problem is still there. Well, I got news for you. I don't have a substance that will just let me wake up to the following day when the substance wears off, amen, and the problem will still be there. I went to the blood of Jesus Christ and the cross of Jesus Christ and accepted God's remedy so the curse could be broken so he could bless me, amen. The Bible says, blessed are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness. There's that word righteousness again. And see, God wants you to have that opportunity to receive his free gift. Deuteronomy chapter 28, it says, Verse 6, blessed shalt thou be when thou cometh in, and blessed thou shalt be when thou goeth out. See, God wants you to be blessed. And another Hebrew word for blessed is to be happy. Some of you are trying to find happiness in substance. Some of you are trying to find happiness in getting what somebody else had. Either you have to get it your own way or work yourself to death to try to keep up with the Smiths and the Jones, as the old saying goes, but you don't really have happiness. Some of you said, if I had my own home, I'd be happy. There's people that got mansions with more bathrooms in than some of you have in an apartment. But guess what? It don't make them happy. Some people say, well, if I could see, I'd be happy. There's plenty of people that can see naturally that have good eyes, but they're still not happy. So the blind man says, if I only had some eyes, I'd be happy. Well, guess what? If you have good eyes to see... Amen. Let God bless you. But if you don't have eyes to see, God can open up those eyes. And I'm just giving illustrations here how things can change. You do not have to stay under the curse of habits. Some of you have a habit every morning that you can't get started until you have so many cups of coffee. A few while ago, you wanted to pick on the alcoholic. Well, guess what? You have a habit that needs to be broken. And I'm not preaching against drinking coffee because guess what? But if you can't get started without coffee, you started out wrong to start with. Some of you say, well, I have to have my cigarettes. I have to have my smoking habits. I have to have my chewing tobacco. I have to have my alcohol. I have to have my drugs. I have to have my prescriptions. 
I have to, have to, have to, have to, and the list goes on and on, but guess what? God says he can set you free from bad habits. Stop for a moment and think. Some of you are on prescription drugs. Figure out how much a month that you add up, the total out of your income goes to that substance. Now, don't get me wrong. There's a the helps ministry, but there's a remedy when you are sick that the prescription cannot heal you. It can comfort you. It can relieve some of the agony and the pain as a substance, as a cover-up. But see, God made a remedy that he can heal you and deliver you. And after a while, you won't be on pharmaceutical prescription drugs. You won't have to worry about going on stronger drugs. You won't have to worry about if they're passing the law to make something legal, amen, to make you feel better, amen. It's just a substance. Praise God for some substance that can help. Because there's sometimes they're needed. But when you don't have to stay in that habit of being under that constantly. Stop for a moment and think how much you're blowing up in the air in smoke. When you get by yourself cigars and cigarettes and pipe tobacco. Not only that, they have warning signs all over them what it does to your body. But yet some of you are in a habit. You say, I got a habit. I get up in the morning. I have to have a cigarette in the morning. I have to have a cigarette after I eat breakfast. I have, to have to have a cigarette before I go to work. I have to have a cigarette on the way to work. I have to have a cigarette before I go into work because they put up no smoking in the working area no more. And every once in a while my break, I have to sneak outside and try to get one. But you say, I'm not addicted. Yes, you are. It's the same way with alcohol. It's the same way with overeating. It's the same way with laziness. It's the same way with substance of any kind. But God says, I can remove that curse from you. God did not create a human being to be in the situation that we have put ourselves because it destroys our bodies. Sin. Amen. Verse 9 out of Deuteronomy chapter 28. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself, and he has swore unto thee that thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God and walk in his ways. How many of you want to walk in the ways of God? Amen. Praise the Lord. I'm going to use an illustration here for a moment. And you know, we have the laws of the land. The laws of the land, well, I'll use this illustration. Years ago, their name come up when I was a kid. They used to call somebody that used to peek in the window in somebody's house and watch people doing certain things, and they called them peeking toms. And guess what? If a peeking tom was called around where you live, looking in there, watching you, whatever you were doing, and you were aware they were there, and you could do something about it, if you make a telephone call, 911, they would send the police officers out there, and you say, he gets what he deserves because he was peeking in here, watching us doing whatever we were doing. And we're not going on to that subject this morning, amen, because that's many different subjects that he could have been watching. But some of you, guess what? We want to be judgmental and say, well, he's getting what he deserves. Well, let me bring this up to you. Some of you have eyes to see. You have televisions in your home. You have computers in your home. You have iPads on your telephones. You got communication where you're looking into a screen, which represents a picture. Some of you are watching things that you shouldn't be watching. Amen. And you just justified the peaking thumb that he ought to get what he gets and he ought to be arrested for looking at something he shouldn't be looking at. Amen. But you are looking at things that don't line up with the word of God. You're putting these thoughts in your mind. Amen. Some of you are watching X-rated movies. Amen. Some of you are doing things that you shouldn't be watching and seeing, and some of you are putting things on the Internet that don't line up with the word of God so others can watch them. You're feeding the problem and the habit. Addiction. See, we can judge people and make comments about people, but see, God wants to break the habit. Can you have some habits? That, be honest with yourself. We're not here to tear you down. We're not here to judge you. We're here to help set you free. Nothing wrong with owning a computer. Nothing wrong with having an iPod. Nothing wrong with having a television set. But you can control what you watch, or you can watch what you desire to watch. How do you know what you desire to watch? Because you first saw it. There's an old saying years ago, a picture is worth a thousand words. How many know a thousand words, amen, is a lot of words? You ever get a thought in your mind and a picture it in your mind? You know, I can picture something in my mind and I can desire it after a while. The Bible talks about King David back in the, uh, the Old Testament. They were at war. King David was the leader of the nation. And instead of being where he should have been, he was at the wrong place at the wrong time 
Amen. And something wrong happened in front of him, but he had to make a choice. Some people right there are listening to me. You say, well, I was at the wrong place at the wrong time, and I just got caught up in the situation I didn't want to be in. King David was there. He wasn't where he was supposed to be. He was supposed to be out leading his troops in the battle because the king of Israel, the leaders of Israel, they lead their troops in the battle. But King David was back at his luxury palace, his man cave thing that I preached a message on quite a few months back. Amen. And he was back there and enjoying his pleasures. And he walks out on his roof one day. And all of a sudden, he gets a picture in his mind because his natural eyes focused on something that he sees. Here was a woman in her own place. You know about Peking Tom? Well, this was Peking David. He was watching down over the rooftop. He seen a woman bathing herself. Instead of turning from it, he kept on watching. And after a while, he had desires. And after a while, his desires led to requests. And after a while, he met his requests. And he had her brought to him because he was the king. And after a while, what he desired to have her, he took her. And then he found out that she was the wife of one of his tr soldiers. And it ended up the murder. Some of you are in situations and habits that you didn't want to be in, but you're at the wrong place at the wrong time. And the situation goes because of a curse of sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the iniquities that are passed on down will be passed on to your children. Some of you have children and you wonder why they're acting the way they are. Study your bloodline in the natural. When you go to the doctor's office, the first thing they want to ask you, what did your father have? What did your mother have? If your father died, what did he die from? What did your mother die from? Some of you have the symptoms in your body of heart problems and liver problems and kidney problems. And some of them are alcoholic problems and lust problems and rage problems and anger and you name it, the list goes on, and you feel like, why am I living this way? God says because it came down from the third or fourth generation going down, if you would study that back through your family history, if the books were kept. Some of you don't know what, want to know where you came from. But I can guarantee you, you can know who you can become. The Bible says you can become a new creature in Christ Jesus. Amen. That all things can pass away. The Bible tells us a, new, a person become a new creature in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And when you get a chance, read Deuteronomy chapter 28, and amen, about the blessing. But also go in the last chapter of it and do some study and find out the curses because they were disobedient to what God wanted to bless them with. Some of you are being cursed because you walked away from the blessings. Some of you never knew the blessings because you never heard the opportunity to receive the blessings. If you're tuned into this preacher today, and these broadcasts, you have the opportunity today to become a brand new person in Christ Jesus because that's what Good Friday and Easter, amen, and the resurrection of Jesus that we just preached about the other month was all about. And the opportunity is for you to receive it. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, it says, A person become a new creature in Christ Jesus. All things are passed away and all things become new. How many out there would like to have a brand new start today? How many would like to, some of those habits to be broken? How many like to be able to go back to AA and tell them, I'm not an alcoholic anymore. I'm not going to fall off the wagon because there's no wagon to fall off of. Because what you would tell me, I was an alcoholic, but I could have a chance of falling off the wagon because that thing is still on me. Why? Because man can't break the curse. I'm here to tell you that alcoholic curse can be broken. That nicotine habit can be broken. That raging spirit can be broken. Just like the wild stallion horse could be broken once it's caught and given to the right rider. Well, guess what? Give your heart and soul to Jesus and your curse can be broken and your habits can be removed. Victory is ours through Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians 15, 57, it says, amen. And God will control, amen. God will take control if you give yourself to him. What does God want to take control? Of all your iniquities, of all your wrongdoings, of all your failures, of all your bad habits, of all the situations that you're bound and caught up in, God can set you free. See, you will die one day. The appointed under man wants to die. After that, the judgment, Hebrews 9, 27, that's what the Bible tells us. Every one of us are going to die one day. 
And after that comes the judgment. It's not dying and it's over and nobody knows anything. You didn't come from nowhere and you're not going to nowhere. You came from somewhere and you're going to end up somewhere. Amen. Stand for something or fall for anything. But guess what? Let the curse of habits be broken today. You can do that by submitting yourself to God. We read there about in Romans 14 and 10. Amen. All will stand before the judgment seat of Christ. 2 Corinthians 5 and 10. Every one of us will give account, whether good or bad. I'd rather stand before God and have him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant, and you'll be rewarded for your good, and the judgment of the bad will be removed, and God won't even remember it no more, because you became a new creature in Christ Jesus. God is here right now. And I don't only mean in this building. God is right where you're at. Wherever you are listening to this message, God is right where you're at. And God is knocking on your heart with this word. He's telling some of you, when you're sick and tired of being sick and tired of being sick and tired of the situation you're in, I can help you and I can set you free. I want to stir you up a little bit. Amen. Turn with me in Psalms, if you have a Bible. Psalms, amen, 118, verse 24 and 25. We in the church sometimes, we sing this little chorus, this is the day, this is the day the Lord has made, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Some of you might even remember that from a small child or in a Sunday school class, amen, or attending church once in a while, amen. So verse 24 says, this is the day which the Lord has made, we will rejoice and be glad in it. Are you glad today? Are you rejoicing today? And, but I like what verse 25 says also. It goes right along with it, and sometimes we miss it. It says, save now. See, God wants to save you now from your bad habits. God wants to save you now from your sins. Save now. Can you say that right now and mean it in your heart? Lord, save now. Now I beseech thee, O Lord. The word beseech means something. It means to ask earnestly and seriously and not joking. Don't sit there and joke around and say, oh, I receive, I'm going to receive the Lord and see what happens and joke around with your friends. The biggest joker of all will be you. Do you ever have a, a deck of cards? And do you ever open up a brand new pack? But you have to take notice when you open up a brand new pack of cards, there's one card in there different from all the rest. It's a joker. What good is a joker in a normal deck of cards? It don't have much value unless you make up a game to try to fit it in. And some of you out there, you're, you're joking all the time. You make a joke out of everything. But see, God wants you to be serious. God wants you to beseech him with a serious heart. Amen. Same now, I beseech thee means to say it like this. Save now, Lord. I'm asking earnestly and seriously. I'm not joking around. I want my life to change right now. And you know what that does? That opens you up to another blessing because the rest of that verse says like this. O oh Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Lord, I'm asking earnestly and serious. I'm not joking. I need financial blessings. I need prosperity in my health. I need the prosperity and increase and victory over these bad habits that have me bound. That's what the word beseech means. Beseech. I'll give you an illustration in the Bible. Amen, where God has used this mighty and greatly, the same word beseech. Amen. Mark chapter 1, starting around the 39th verse. And here Jesus, he, it says he preached in the synagogue, talking about Jesus, throughout all Galilee and cast out devils. Yes, there is such thing as devils. Some of you are bound in the situation of your bad habits because of the influence of, of the iniquities of the spirits that are passed down for three or four generations on down. And there came a leper to him, beseeching him. There's that word, beseeching him. He became to Jesus and he asked seriously, earnestly, and not joking around, he had a problem. Do you have a problem? I'm here today if you said, if you beseech Jesus right now and you ask, amen, earnestly and seriously from your own self, don't worry about who's around you. Don't worry about who's going to laugh at you. Look at the one that's going to bless you and heal you and deliver you. Amen. And set you free. His name is Jesus. And he beseeched him. And kneeling down to him, said unto him, If thou wilt, thou can make 
me clean. And I like what Jesus said. Verse 41, And Jesus moved with compassion, put forth his hand, and touched him, and said unto him, I will, thou be clean. Now what? It didn't take long. What was the man's request? What's your request? What did you ask seriously and earnestly? He asked seriously and earnestly, Lord, if thou will, thou can make me clean. And Jesus turned around and said, I will. And it was done. See how quick it would be done if you're serious with God? Beseech him earnestly, seriously, and not joking around. Some people go in now to church joking all the time. Sad to say, some people go to church on Sunday morning, and they forget all about God all week long, and then they want to come around jokingly, even though they're not making a joke out of it. They're making an appearance somewhere, amen, and they're living just like everybody else except for a few moments on a Sunday morning. They're not serious. I'm serious. God wants to change your life. God wants to make you a new creature. God wants to set you free. Amen. And straightway charged him for which sent him away. As soon as he received it, he told him to go to the priests and show thyself for the cleansing of those things which Moses commanded thee for a testimony unto him. So if you were a leper and had a disease, if you had this sickness or this disease or this problem, you had to go to a high priest and get a bill of cleansiness Amen. To show that you were actually healed, not just confessing something that didn't happen. And then you were allowed to go back to your family or let back to go to your job, go out in the public. You didn't have to stay a certain distance away from somebody. You didn't have to hide. Some of you are out there hiding. Some of you are wanted by the law. That's why you are hiding. Some of you are running from family members and loved ones because you got yourself in some bad habits and you don't want them to know about your bad habits, and you think you can cover it up hiding in a hotel room somewhere or with a little group here and a little group there or back in another city somewhere, and you got family and loved ones that really love you, but they don't know the habits that you have now. But even if you have the habits right now, they still love you. I have some children that ran down some wrong roads, but I still love them. When I was a child, I made some wrong choices, but my parents still loved me. I got news for you. Even though you made some bad mistakes through the iniquities of your father for three or four generations on down or through sin, or you just decide to start them up yourself, amen, God loves you. He doesn't love the wrong that you've done, but he loves you. He will work with you. He will help you. Yes, he will. Turn with me in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. The Bible lets us know also we have a part to do ourselves. Romans 12, starting around with the first verse and the second verse. Now here Paul is talking to the believers, because some of you out there were believers, but you walked away, or you still are believing and you're listening to this message. This applies to people just like me. I'm still serving God. Amen. I beseech you, okay, I'm asking you earnestly and seriously, amen, not joking around that you, brethren, talking about all the believers, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is good and acceptable, and be in the perfect will of God. <clears throat> For verse 3, For I say through the grace given unto me, to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think, to think soberly, according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. God gave every one of you faith. The Bible says without faith it's impossible to please God. Why did you bring that up, preacher? Because even in your bad habits, even in your bondage, even from the iniquities of the curses of your father for three or four generations on down, you can be set free by faith. The Bible lets us know in the book of Ephesians, amen, through faith and grace we are saved, not of works that any man should vote. I'm not asking you to go out there and go to work and get involved in all kind of things and then say slowly it will pass away. I'm here to tell you today, if you operate with that measure of faith that God has given to every one of you, a measure of faith, and you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God, that he came and paid that the curse can be cut and broken. That bloodline of the curse is broken. 
and you become a brand new person in Jesus Christ, that you become sons and daughters of God, God can bless you and God can deliver you. Amen. Not I don't only care about my family, I care about you. God cares about you. Amen. Don't let, amen, this be on your family or your family members, what? Things that are by the family curse of the generations. Get involved in God's family. Get involved in the house of the Lord, and God will bless you. In Exodus chapter 33, even in the Old Testament, amen, Moses, amen, came to the Lord in verse 17. He says, I beseech thee, Lord, show me thy glory. Glory means the splendor and the honor of God, God's presence. Moses said, I beseech you. Moses said, Lord, I'm earnestly, seriously, I'm not joking. Lord, I want to talk to you. I want to see you. I want you to prove yourself to me right now. That's what, God, that's what Moses was saying, to bring it up with that word beseech. And then the Lord said unto Moses, I will do the thing that thou hast spoken, for thou hast found grace in my sight, and I know thy name. God knows your name. Yes, you. Well, I changed my name. God knows what your original name was, and God knows what you changed your name to. God knows you. He created you. And God has given you grace. Amen? Through grace, through faith and grace, you are saved. Every one of us have a measure of grace and faith. God gave it to us. And if you stir that up, amen, God says he knows your name, and he will give what you're asking him to do. Matthew chapter 7 says this, verse 7, everyone that asks, it says ask, seek, and knock. Then it says everyone that asks, everyone that seeketh, and everyone that knocks. Everyone that asks, it shall be given them. Everyone that seeks, they shall find. And everyone that knocks, it shall be opened. Knock on the door of Jesus today. Hey, dear Lord Jesus, it's me. You know my name. He'll greet you at the door of your heart and say, yeah, I'm waiting for you to welcome me in. He'll make you a brand new creature. He'll change the bondage that have you in bondage. All you have to do is to ask and receive. Aren't you glad that God wants you to ask and receive? But many out there say, well, I don't believe there is a God. Remember the fool said in his heart, there ain't no God. Don't listen to that lie and be damned. Let God set you free. God loves you and God cares for you. Turn with me in Romans chapter 1. Got a Bible? Amen. This is, this is uh, some hard sayings here, but I want to tell you the truth because the truth can set you free. God did not make a mistake and put me in the wrong body or her in the wrong body or them in the wrong body or you in the wrong body. God did not make a mistake and make you wrong. Amen. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 1, started around the 21st verse, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were they thankful, but became vain in their imagination, and their foolish hearts were darkened. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Remember that? The fool makes mockery of sin, Proverbs 14 and 9. They became mockeries of sin and changed the glory of the incorruptible God into images made like a corruptible man and to birds and four-footed creatures and creeping things. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. Remember, every one of us what we read there in Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, about what you've done in your body, you're going to give account for, and you will be judged. So don't blame it on somebody else. Some of you might have been abused, and from the generations on back, as a little child, because somebody abused somebody else, they abused you, and the list goes on and on. It's just hereditary. It becomes a creature of habit. It needs to be broken. Some of you are victims and not the problem. But you can be a survivor of your problem through Jesus Christ and not become a victim, amen, to cause somebody else to be a victim to your bad habit that you were trapped in. 
Wherefore God gave up the unclean lust of their own hearts. Verse 25, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever, amen, that means so be it. For this cause God gave them up unto veil affections for even their own women to change the natural youth into which is against nature. Talking to you young ladies out there today. And likewise also the men leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their own lust one towards another. Talking to you men out there today. With men working that which is unseen and receiving in itself the represents of their error which was not made to be, not meant to be. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge of God, gave them over to a reprobate mind to do the things which they are not. Amen. Do those things that are not. This ain't the best kind of preacher, but this is the kind of preacher who will set you free. This is the kind of preacher that can get you out of the situation you're, that you feel trapped in. This is the one that you can be forgiven for that you don't have to continue in. Being filled with unrighteousness, fortification, wickedness, covetousness, maliceness, full of envy, murder, debates, deceitful, amen, whispers, backbiters, hatred to God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, remember, every one of us will be judged, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. The generation we're living in has more fools in it than I ever saw in all the generations that I knew of my 70 years of life. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. Confessing themselves to become wise, they became fools. Fools make mockery of what I just preached throughout the day. So if you're out there joking and making mockery of it, it's nothing new. You're just under the curse of a generation for three or four generations that's done the same. But I'm here to tell you, you don't have to stay entrapped in that. God can set you free. See, God wants you to repent. What does repent mean, preacher? Amen. Sorry for the wrongdoing to change one's ways and one's mind. I can change my mind to what I used to be, and I could try to make it happen without the help of God, and I can get so far in that. But to get the photo deliverance and the root cut of the situation, there's only one thing that can break the curse, and that's the Son of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, the Lord and the Savior of all mankind. And then it says the remission of sin. That means you're released, a dismissal, and forgiven. God will remember the charges against you no more. I don't care what man's been calling you. I don't care what family member's been calling you. God wants you to become sons and daughters of God that you can walk in his holiness and his righteousness and be blessed. The Bible says he will bless you. Amen. Institutions, organizations of all different kinds. Amen. People working with people with different problems, they are the helps. Praise God for some of the helps. But when the helps get to the full limit and it's not working, when the help gets to the full limit and say there's still possibilities, when the help ministries get to the man organizations and the uh, locations of these specialists, amen, and these institutions tell you you're going to have the symptoms of these problems for the rest of your life, don't believe the whole truth of that statement because you do not have to stay in that situation. You do not have to be uh, labeled with that past experience and habits because Jesus Christ can set you free never to remember them again. God can remove all that guilt and all that shame from you. How many know God can remove the guilt? How many know God can remove the shame? I'm glad he can. I'm glad I can stand before you and tell you what I used to be. I'm not no more. I'm glad to tell you that I come down through my father and my father's father and my great-grandfather for three or four generations has no effect on my life no more because when it shows up, I can reject it through the anointing of God. See, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 3, verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart. See, in your heart you have to make that decision today that you want the 
the iniquities of the curse of your habits to be broken. Trust in the Lord with thy heart and lean not unto thy understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path. He will help you. Not only will he help you, he will forgive you. Amen. In Isaiah 38, 17, it says, For I have cast all your sins, all your iniquities, all the bad habits you got behind his back, God said. God will put them behind him if you ask him to. But see, you have to ask today. And then in Psalms 103, verse 12, God says, As far as the east is from the west, so far have we removed all your transgressions, the breaking of God's laws and commandments, from us. God says, I've put them so far from me, I won't even, when your name shows up to me, because remember, I know your name, I won't even remember what man has called you. I won't even remember what you used to call yourself. I'll tell you, I love you and you are mine. You've been bought with a price. Come to me, my child. Come to me, my son. Come to me, my daughter. I love you. I'll forgive you, but you have to ask me. There's no works to do. My son did all the work for you. Amen. Jeremiah 31, 34, I said, I will forgive their iniquities, and I will remember their sins no more. Remember the iniquities of the father for three or four generations going down? Amen. Or upon you without the removing of it. But Jeremiah 31, 34 says, God will forgive all those iniquities, and he will remember that no more, that sin no more. Praise God. God don't remember what my grandpa and my father was and my great-grandfather was when he looks at me and knows my name. He said, that's been a race. Why? Because I asked him to. I'm glad he did. You know, if I got what I deserved, I won't be able to take what I deserved. But I received God's grace and his mercy. In Romans 8 and 1, it says, there is therefore now. When is now? Right now. When's now? Right now. When's now now? Right now is now. There is no condemnation now to them which are in Christ Jesus, who come out from the iniquities of their father. Amen. Where they will remember no more by him, put behind his back as far as the east is from the west, be removed from you. There is now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Amen. And in Philippians 3, 13 and 14, it gives you and I a little instruction. Forget. How can I forget? You won't forget until God erases it from your mind. He'll let you remember, but it won't condemn you no more because God wants you and you, and yes, you, to help people that are under those same habits that you're under and they have no way out. And you'll be able to look at them and say, you know where you're at I once was. I walked in the shoes that you walked in. I've been at the places where you've been. And you know, I met a man named Jesus who loved me and forgave me. And guess what? If he could set me free, he could set you free. Some of you out there know what I'm talking about. You can remember where you were and what you've done, but God don't condemn you for it no more. He gives you that experience to help somebody else. And guess what? Everybody that you will help, they'll know that you've been there. That person that's been on drugs and you're delivered and set free and you thought there'd be no way out and God set you free, and that person's telling you, I can't break the habit. I don't know how to get off of it. I'm so addicted. I got news for you. You don't have to only sweat it out. It will be removed from you. And God will say, I'll give you victory over the thing that had victory over you. Why? Because you've been there. You need to come out of it. I'm talking to you today. Yes, God wants to change you. Yeah, I'm talking to you too. Yes, God wants to get to you and God wants to change you. Amen. In Hebrews 8 and 12, because somebody said, well, I gave you Old Testament. Here's what grace says in the New Testament. Their sins and their iniquities will I remember no more, Hebrews 8 and 12. See, God says he won't remember what grandpa and daddy and great-grandpa tried to put on you through the natural birth, and we all had natural birth, and you wouldn't be here. Just because you're the preacher's kid didn't mean you didn't have natural birth. Just because you're a preacher or a Sunday school teacher didn't mean you didn't have not your birth. We all have sin and come short of the glory of God. Some of you never been in a church building in all your lives. It's about time you find one that's going to preach the word of God, not just any old place. It will make a difference because your faith will grow. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And how can you hear without a preacher? I'm preaching to you because I love you. And God gave me a message to say, you can be set free from the curse of your habits. 
praise God, it can be broken. The Bible says how Jesus in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, who went around doing good, healing all that were oppressed of the devil and set them free. Some of you are so oppressed, guess what? You don't even want to come out of it. Some of you stay drunk so you don't ever sober up. That's not living. Some of you say, well, I can't live without the next drink. Yes, you can. Some people have been there, and they're set free. You could be set free. Some of you were great businessmen and great people in the world, had good families, but your habits have destroyed it, and you feel like you lost everything. God can restore unto you what you have lost. Get back up. It's not too late. God's given you a brand new start, a brand new change. Amen. 1 John 1, 7 says, What cleanses me? The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, God's son, cleanses us from all sins, all iniquities. It takes the blood of Jesus. Oh, we sing that little chorus, oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow, and there's power in the blood, power in the blood. How many know there's power in the blood of Jesus? It's the only thing that can wash your bad iniquities and have us away. Yes, it sounds bloody, doesn't it? Yes, it's the blood of Jesus Christ that was shed on an old hill over 2,000 years ago called Gothgotha, where he hung between two thieves, and one was forgiven the very day because he asked. One would make a mockery, amen, whatever. You can't make mockery of it. You can't joke around with it. If thou be the son of God, get us down here off of here so we go out and do our thing. No, God ain't going to save you to go back and do your thing. God's going to save you so you'll start doing his will and break the habit so you can help people that have habits that you had and you can tell them, look what the Lord has done. If he's done it for me, he can do it for you. I'm here to tell you some of the things that I've done, he set me free. And I'm here to tell you he can do the same for you. But you have to ask him. In 1 John 1 and 9, it says, If we confess our sins, he's faithful. And just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Every bit of it. Every little bit of it, God wants to forgive you. Amen. Well, preacher, I want to do this. Well, I'm going to say a little prayer with you. And wherever you're at, say it out loud. Or speak it in your mind and your heart. But you have to say it within yourself. Amen. Here's what Romans 10 tells us. Amen. Verse 9 and 10. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Romans 10, verse 13. For whosoever, that's including you, 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 and you, and you, and her, and him, and those and every one of you, I'm pointing right at you. God knows your name. God's dealing with you right now. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be what? Shall be saved, shall be forgiven, shall be changed. I want you to say this prayer with this preacher and mean it from your heart. And if you mean it from your heart, God is about ready to give you that change. Break some bad habits. Amen. Bring deliverance and be set free. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I come to you right now. Lord, you see my broken heart. Lord, you see my pain and my agony and my grief and my heart, Lord. Lord, I have addictions. I have bondages. I have habits. I tried many times to quit. I tried many times to walk away. Lord, my eyes sometimes focus on things and, and they lead me into temptations of lust. Lord Jesus, set me free. Lord, I live for the bottle, but Lord, let me have victory over the bottle. Lord, I live for the next fix, Lord, but let, the, let you fix every situation in my life right now that I will have victory over that and be delivered and set free. Lord, I'm not the man or the woman I want to be, but, Lord, I try to be. Will you help me? Lord, I'm asking. Lord, I'm beseeching you. I'm asking earnestly. Say this. Believe this in your heart. God's dealing with you right now. And say, dear Lord, according to your word, Jesus Christ, I believe in my heart, and I'm confessing him with my mouth. Help me. Save me. Deliver me. Receive me. Because Jesus said, Lord, whoever cometh to me, I will no wise cast out. I'm coming to Jesus right now. I'm coming out of the horrible pit and the married clay that I'm living in, out of Psalms 40. 
I will to look that up and find that, Lord, as soon as I get a Bible. Help me to get a Bible. Help me to find a good Bible-believing church to enter in so I can feast upon your word. And, Lord, by grace, I am saved through faith. I'm not working for it. According to your word, I accept it right now. I don't fully understand it, but, Lord, help me to grow in your grace. Help me to see the change in those around me, and they will see the change in me. Lord, let me see others the way you see us. And, Lord, I will have compassion. I will have mercy on those that I see snapped in terror in the snares and traps of the enemy where I used to live. And I've been set free this very moment because I believe it in my heart. I have victory because greater is he that's in me than is he that's in this world. And I accept your perfect gift in Jesus' name. Amen. And, Lord, according to John chapter 8, verse 32, I shall know the truth. And the truth this very moment of God's word has set me free. Welcome into the kingdom of God, brothers and sisters. Welcome into a new, brand new beginning. That very moment, if you said that in your heart and you believe it, God has written your name in the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. And now, he has given you a future in his kingdom. He has given you a future of victory over all the habits that had you bound. Get out there and find good Christian fellowship. Get good godly counseling, Christian counseling. Get wisdom and knowledge from the word of God and the understanding. Don't hang around with the old crowd and let them pull you down. Get victory and then go back to the old crowd and say, look what the Lord has done for me. He set me free. Don't get caught in peer pressure because peer pressure will lay a snare and a trap for you. Come out from among them and be separate, but don't judge them. Go back once you've got total victory and reach out a helping hand and say, come on, brother. Come on, sister. God wants to pick you up. The arm of the Lord is not short. Just like my hand's reaching out to you right now, God is reaching out to you and say, rise up in victory. Walk like you never walked before. Walk in faith and not by sight. Amen. And you will see step by step as a little child learn how to walk. I'm teaching you, son. I'm teaching you, daughter, how to walk with me in victory. You have overcome the habits that had you bound. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise the Lord. Anybody here needs special prayer? Amen. Good morning. Glad to have prayer with you and agree with you. Continue to pray for this ministry. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. And watch over this broadcast. If the Lord lays it on your heart when you have the address on the spoken screen, please send a donation or prayer request, and people will get back with you and fellowship with you. And God richly bless. Amen.